Hey guys, welcome to the engine room. My name is Dex and I'm the binary machinist. I'm a data engineer. I design and build systems that process very large data sets, often for so-called machine learning or AI applications, and sometimes just for plain old analytics. The engine room is a series of online sessions where I teach data engineering theory, practice, tools, and techniques, and specifically the tools and techniques I use to get things done on the job. We're going to explore the subject matter by actually building data pipelines from simple ones running as a handful of processes on one machine to complex ones that run on clusters. We're going to kick things off by talking about Mercury, which is an open source Python framework for data engineering. Uh, Mer Mercury's main function is helping you construct data pipelines. Um, I built Mercury. It's essentially uh, a collection of design patterns that I use to solve problems that I see all the time baked into a toolkit. The most basic tools in that kit are called xfile and ngest. They are command line scripts and in this video we'll use xfile to get started with step one of a very simple pipeline. So let's talk pipelines for a minute. So. <clears throat> So when we're building data pipelines, you know, in, in data engineering, we're, we're often called on to do what's called ETL. ETL means extract, transform, and load. And the typical workflow is that we start with some source data. It's often in a flat file. And that file is very often, you know, either comma-separated values or some other kind of character-separated values, one record per line. And our initial task is usually to take an input record, transform it somehow, right, so that we have a collection of transformed records from this file, and then deposit those transformed records in some kind of data store, typically a relational database. So we extract transform and load okay so X file typically operates here right and ngest typically operates here so we're going to start with X file and see how it helps us kind of get results quickly as we're as we're building out uh, uh, this this simple pipeline, so let's jump back uh, to the command line and get started. So, if you'd like to follow along with the exercises, the the probably the best thing to do is to clone the repo. There is a link in the description. You can just uh, hit up uh, GitHub and clone the Mercury demo repo, and then you'll have uh, these files ready to go. Um, if you're just using, if you just like to use Mercury uh, uh, by itself, then you use whatever uh, Python dependency manager you prefer to install it. I tend to use pipn, so you could say pipn install Mercury toolkit and once that's done you'll be able to use uh, all the, the tools in Mercury uh, I've more or less done that I have the dependencies loaded into um, into the pip file uh, for those of you who use ordinary pip I have the same thing in requirements.txt I've already run pipenv install so all I have to do now is execute pipenv shell and it'll launch the virtual environment into which the Mercury dependencies have already been installed. So now I can run the Mercury tools and refer to uh, uh, Mer modules, Python modules that are part of Mercury. So again, we're going to start with X file. So let's run that. Okay. So we run X file by itself. We get a set of usage strings. Let's talk about those. X file, like many of the tools in Mercury, is driven by a config file. It's a YAML config file that we'll explore shortly. Um, because we're reading 
source records, again, in the case of CSV files, there's some kind of delimiter. So we specify that. We specify a map. A map is a kind of rule set. We'll get more into that when we explore the init file and its structure. And then we specify the actual source data file itself. And then there's a, an optional limit field. Uh, I added this in because uh, many times in data engineering you're dealing with very large source files. You don't want to have to uh, read the entire source file uh, just to run some small scale experiments while you figure out what you're doing and how you're going to transform things. So uh, in the early stages I'll often you know, uh, uh, run X-File with a, with a very small limit, you know, a handful of records, and once I've got things tweaked the way I want them, then I'll remove that and let the thing run to completion. Um, X-File can also read JSON files, right? So when you're running X-File against a JSON source, there's no need to specify a delimiter, obviously. You specify the JSON flag. It expects to see one record per line in the source file. Same thing, you'll specify a map, which is your, trans your transformation rule set, the source data file, and optional limit, okay? Uh, let's jump into the file itself, excuse me, the uh, init file itself and see its anatomy. Okay, so we have a file called extract test. I should point out that I'm one directory higher than I should be, right? So let's go to X file one. We're in the first module, right? So here we go. And that's that's where all our, all our stuff is. Okay, so let's talk about the structure of this init file. Uh, every init file has got a global section. These are settings that are kind of common to the whole project. There's a project home. X-File is going to look for certain things, Python modules, for example, in relation to the project home. Here I've specified it as an environment variable. It can also be an explicit path, but I, I, wrote, uh, I wrote it so that, uh, so that if, um, if, there's, if, the, if the string here is preceded by a dollar sign, uh, then the X file initializing initialization logic knows that it should look for an environment variable. Uh, you specify a data source module. Data sources are uh, user supplied classes that are involved in kind of more complex transforms when you need to you know do more sophisticated lookups or you need to compute output values based on the value of your input records. We're not going to use we're going to use the data uh, source now but we will in a subsequent video. Uh, service modules are long-running singletons. Uh, they are spun up when X file starts and they're typically used to to wrap external services that you might use as your uh, transforming data. So if you need to perform lookups against the database, then you might have a service object that wraps uh, a Postgres instance, for example. We're not going to use any now, but we will later. Uh, so service objects section specifies all the service objects. Uh, th they'll be listed by alias, and they are to be found in the service module, Python module. These are both just, you know, the names of Python modules. Uh, the sources section is similar. It um, it specifies the actual data source classes you will use, and each data source class, which again must be must be sitting in the uh, specified data source module, each class is referred to uh, under an alias. Okay, uh, and then we have the maps section, and uh, essentially this is a, a collection of maps. Each map has a name. We have one map. It's called test. It's got some settings. We don't need to specify any settings for now. It's got a lookup source. That is to say, if in the co course of this transform we need to use a lookup data source, this is the data source to use, the one that is specified under the alias test. And then most importantly, there's a fields section. And in the fields, that's where we're going um, start to start to populate the logic of this thing. And, and tell it how to turn input records into output records. So we jump back to the command line for a second. Now we have a little clearer idea of, of what's going on. Um, in the config file, there will be a collection of maps, named maps, pick one, okay? And you use that rule set to transform this data file. Uh, a couple other things, there is a, if you run, xfile-help, you get a 
more complete explanation of what's going on with the usage strings, i point out a couple things. One, there's, um, there's an option. You can use XFile with this option, with the dash dash list option. And this is just a convenience function to list for you uh, the various things that you've specified, the, uh, the config objects, if you will, that you've specified in your config file. So show me all the sources in this config file, all the maps, all the globals. Um, uh, sometimes if you have a very long config file and you f forget what you put in there, you can just run the list functions. Oh, I remember that, the, you know, I, I created a map called this, and you, you can just uh, pull it up. Um, there is a pass-through mode that you can run where you simply, uh, you know, specify the, uh, the, the P flag, and it will read the input file and emit output records without running any transforms against the data. That's a, a convenient thing sometimes. And then the streaming mode, stream mode, dash s or dash dash stream, uh, tells xfile that instead of reading the source data from a data file, notice here we have dash s and there's no data file. Instead of reading source data from a data file, it reads source data from standard input so that you can snap X file together with other processes um, in kind of Unix philosophy <laughs> style, right? And I've, I've built a lot of the things in X file uh, according to the Unix philosophy, right? Small, sharp tools that communicate with each other using simple text protocols, and you can snap them together. So you can build kind of complex machines, but then you can, you can very easily take those machines apart and debug the individual components and kind of reason about them. So um, I'm, I'm big on kind of using Unix as infrastructure and, and doing things like that. So that's uh, streaming mode allows you to use use um, standard in. Okay, so let's let's actually start building this thing, right? We've got some source data. Let's take a look what we've got. We've got test.csv cat test.csv. What's in there? And it's just a simple uh, pipe delimited text file, uh, just a handful of records, that's all we need for now. And so let's let's do something to it. Uh, a very simple transform that we can perform on this thing is to just change the header names, because that's actually, it, you know, it seems trivial, but that's something you end up doing a lot, right? You have a source file, it's got certain uh, field names, and uh, you're landing it in a data store which requires field names that are different from the ones you've been given. Now, rewriting those is simple to do in Python, but the idea is that I wanted something that would let me do it in a way that's very easy to, to change without having to rewrite a lot of boilerplate code, you know, when the specification changes. So that's why, that's one of the, one of the reasons I wrote X-File. So let's do that. Let's, let's, uh, let's generate a set of output records, one per input record, where the field names are, instead of, uh, you know, capitalized and having spaces in them, they'll be all lowercase and the spaces will be replaced with underscores. Okay, so let's do that. Um, <clears throat> so we go to our field section and in, in, uh, in the YAML init file um, each field is named and the name represents the name of the output field. So Remember that a map is a set of rules for transforming input records to output records. So uh, here we're going to say, for example, first name. Right? And that specifies that the output records that this map generates, the op each output record is, is going to have a field called lowercase first underscore name. Now, where is actually no let me let me back up a second let's let's just do all the output fields so we're gonna have first name last name excuse me hey learn to type uh, and then we're gonna say let's say street address right city What's going on? Uh, state.
Okay. So with this and nothing else, what we've told XFile is that we want it to generate output records with these field names. That's it. So let's just save that and see what we've got. All right, so now we're going to actually perform a transform, we run XFile again to get our usage strings, and we say so XFile dash dash config, um, and that's um, test. Uh, no, I think it's extract tech test.yaml, correct? Um, delimiter is pipe. Make sure we use quotes so that the shell doesn't get confused. Um, the map's name is test, all right? And the data file is test.csv, okay? See what we got. Good. We got an error, but it's a clear error, which is always desirable. Um, Xfile has told us that we have an, a missing environment variable, mdemo home. Now, where did Xfile get that? We we'll go back to look at the config file. We specified the project home was mdemo home, and because there's a dollar sign, it's an nvar. Um, so Xfile will give you a polite error that says, hey, you specified this nvar, and I don't know, you haven't said it. So let's fix that. And we'll just set it to our working directory. Okay? So let's run that again. Okay, very good. We got another error, but it's clear. It tells us what's going on, which is that we have a, a data source named test data source uh, that was not found in the target Python module. So let's go back and look, right? We did specify that there's supposed to be a class, a data source class, called test data source, and it was not found in our data source module. Okay, let's investigate. That's the problem, right? Test data src is what's here, but what's specified in init file is test data source. So um, X file doesn't freak out, it just politely tells you what's wrong. So let's fix that. Okay, so this data source doesn't do anything, but it doesn't have to. What, what it does have to do is just match the class name that we specified in the init file. Okay, so that's saved. Let's go back. Let's run our transform. Okay, very good. So we scanned three input records. We got three output records. Uh, the field names are what we specified. Right, so we've gone from having you know field names with capital uh, with capitalization and spaces to all lowercase and underscores. Now, of course, the problem is that the contents of these fields are all null, but we'll fix that. Uh, the reason why they're null is that we haven't told XFile how to populate these fields, where the data is coming from. So let's do that now. Okay, so. The way XFile works is that for each field, you specify a source, for example. Right? In this case, we're, what we're going to say is that the source, that is the, the, the source of the data for this field is going to be the record. That is the inbound record that XFile has scanned. Right? And then the key, because XFile reads inbound records into each inbound record into a Python dictionary, right? So the key is going to be first name, which makes sense. If you look at the, right, if, if you think about, you can see right away that if you, if you read these fields into Python dictionaries, okay, then you know the 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 name John will be in the first dictionary that is read from this file under the key first space name. So we're just telling XFile to use that key to get that data, and that's going to be the data that populates this field in the emitted record. So let's do the rest of these because we kind of know what what they're going to be, right? So 
specify the source of the record and key. And before we do that, let's do some copy pasta. just going to say the key for this will be last name. The key for this will be street address. That's city. That's state. And that's zip code. Let's just double check. That's yes, zip code, right? So street address, city, state, zip code, right? Okay. Up, up. I said NY, that's a mistake. State, there we go. Showing a bit of home field bias. Okay, so now we, we have a field section where we've specified the output names of each field in the record. And for each field in the record, we've said where X file is going to get its information. Okay, so let's go back. And let's run it. And now here we have it, right? We have the field names that we specified and the field values that we specified that that uh, that match uh, the contents of the input fields in our source file. Okay, so this is uh, probably the simplest kind of transform we can do aside from the identity transform, right? But it is a kind of a transform that we see uh, often, you know, as part of what we're doing when, when we're uh, processing data um, on a real world job. Now we're, we're going to get to more complex transforms. X-File is capable of doing much more complex things with source data, but uh, I think this is a good stopping point for now. Uh, so we'll pick this up and start adding on complexity and talk about data sources, and lookups, and, and on-the-fly computations and things like that in the next video. So thanks for tuning in. Uh, please like and subscribe uh, if you found this uh, helpful or useful or amusing. And uh, check the relevant links in the description uh, for links to the, the, uh, the GitHub repo uh, so you can pull the code and follow along. And We'll see you next time in the engine room. Take care.